Well, I suppose, first of all, I'll go get my pay. Regardless of what transpired, we fulfilled our mission. After that, I don't know. War is an entirely different story, and ending up beaten to a pulp with a damned warhammer certainly isn't on my priority list. My loyalties are with my employer, who now happens to be dead. If I stay, someone will have to make it worth my while. Period. On the other hand, if we don't manage to stop the cleansing from happening, it won't make a difference if I'm here or on Calais. Oh, my. What did I get myself into? I feel like a bloody marionette in a goddamn play. It is. Even though the Calais Beach would probably be better for my health than joining your cause. Enemy invasions, mysterious corpses. You seem to attract trouble wherever you go, as we've seen more than once now. You know, there's one thing I just couldn't get out of my head since all this started. Does mankind deserve to be saved? I mean, have we as a species really made this world a better place? What have we accomplished apart from bloodbaths and wars in the name of the true gods or the right way to see things? And even now that we have a common enemy, we fail spectacularly to pull together. That's pathetic somehow, isn't it? Just pathetic. <sighs> Heck, I sound like the biggest cynic alive. Let's stop here before it gets any worse. Go talk to the fisherwoman. You're really curious, aren't you? But yes, there is something that troubles me, apart from the obvious. It's my sister. Well, I told you that we haven't talked much since, you know, since the thing with our family happened. A couple of moons before we met, I wanted to change that, and I went to see her at the League of the Apothecary in the Frostcliff Mountains. But she was gone, just like that, and no one knew where she went. It's been troubling me for quite some time now. It's probably nothing, but still, I'm worried. Ah, you're awake. How are you? No offense, but you look battered. Eh, don't thank me. I only did what every other path-abiding citizen would have done as well. Your friend, he told me about the Naramese. War. I have trouble believing it. Oh, how very reassuring to hear that. But I guess we're well off in Duneville. As long as they don't break through the cavern gate, there's no way they can get inside the town. Of course, that doesn't apply to the plantations and mines. <sighs> oh, blazes. Such chaos. Those bloody Naramese. Nothing is sacred to them anymore, is it? For millennia there was peace between the lands of the civilized world. And now this. They're heretics, if you ask me. No more and no less. They should be hung from trees, all of them. Anyway, I guess it's best if you rest a little more. As I said, you look as though you need it. I'll wake you up when we arrive.
I will do our best. I didn't think I'd ever say this, but right now I'd give a lot for the art guard to be here instead of these Doonville watchdogs. At least they know how to wage a war. <sighs> In any case, you should get back to the Sun Temple as soon as possible and show those Naramese bastards whose country this is. We will. And again, thanks for your help. Don't mention it. So, we should be back within range of the teleport runes. I'm gonna head straight back to the temple. See you there. Safe travels. Huh? Well, what should I think about it? It starts getting really ugly. I forgot how that imbecile made it to Captain. You say anything There you are. I've been looking for you for days. Do you remember me? You, um, helped me back in the ruin. Shh, not here. I... I just came to thank you. Thanks to you, I was able to pay me debts. And both my family and the farm are safe once again. As you can imagine, I don't have any money to show you my gratitude. But I thought that this might be useful to you. Take it. It's the least I can do. Aye, of course. I... I'm working on it. Mark blessed. And may your path always be even. Outlander. What a 
So, Ira, good to see you. I heard about what happened on Half Moon Island. It's a wonder you and that mercenary made it back alive. But war, it just seems so unreal. How has it come to this? Now we not only have to fight these high ones, but also some fanatic who thinks he knows best? If they are, then maybe we were foolish to think that the Red Madness is the only weapon at their disposal. Tell me, Sa'ira, how is it possible that our beliefs about what's best for mankind are so different? Why are we so eager to be at each other's throats? <laughs> suffering leads to more suffering. Yes, that makes sense. You know what I find so hard to understand? Why there are so few people who actually care. So few people who feel the need to change something like you and I do. <sighs> there are moments I just feel so powerless. As if we all know that if we keep going like this, we're headed for a catastrophe. But instead of changing course, we just stand by and watch. Do you know the feeling? Yes, I mean... Is it so hard to see that this world could be such a better place if we'd only care a tiny bit more about something other than what's happening in front of our doorsteps? You understand what I'm trying to say, don't you? You know that feeling, too. I don't know. To me, that just sounds like an excuse. Whenever I think about it, I find it so hard not to get angry. Take all those upper city snobs with their colorful garments and exotic perfumes. They could put all that money to such good use if only they wanted to, but no, they don't. Because they just don't give a damn about the poor. Sometimes I imagine going down there, grabbing one of them by the collar and dragging them down into the undercity. And there I'd force them to see, just for once. But even that probably wouldn't help. I guess we only care about the things that directly affect us. Who fights against poverty if he's never suffered from it? Yes. <sighs> and once again, you've had to listen to another deluge of my whining. I guess I'm just not a person for pleasantries. Sorry. Um... Yes, that, uh, might be the case. Anyway, I need to make some preparations now. Master Bartar requested my support with something, and I shouldn't keep him waiting any longer.
you look. Where is my this sir? To lead? But that's ridiculous. We have to at least try to negotiate. You know his demands. There's no basis for negotiation. He has not seen what we have seen. The writings, the memories of the Prophet. If he just well, realized... I Dianor Korak would rather throw away his calm that had been a Shit. mistake. Believe what me, took you I so long? It. And where is Constantine? That's a long story. And those were his final words? I... I can't believe it. Simply another victim of the High Ones. If we do not activate the beacon soon, he won't be the last. Oh right, the beacon. If it's activated, we'll simply glow the red madness away, won't we? Or maybe we could, for once in all this, do something that actually makes sense, and focus our resources on finding an alchemistical or thaumaturgial solution to this problem, rather than trusting in a pile of scrap metal. Oh, by the prophet's ass, won't you just shut up for a minute? All day long you do nothing but babble, getting on our nerves, and nothing you ever say gets any closer to a fucking solution. So why don't you just shove off to one of the bathhouses? Go torture the washerwomen with your never-ending lamentations. That would be helpful for a change. You will take that back. Will I? Come here and make me. I'd be delighted. Blasphemy! God, your tongue, this is blasphemy! Mage, or... or what? Are you gonna kill me? That's what you do best, you and your fucking order. Silence! You are angry, Lishari Pegast. And I understand why. But in the moment you let that anger destroy this alliance, Firespark's sacrifice will have been in vain. Is that what you want? I... Is that what you want? No. No, it isn't. Good. I am... this endless bickering. We have a responsibility, and we will fulfill it. Well said, Oranthio. And how exactly do you think we are going to do that? Without the sources, the beacon is as worthless as a heap of rusty iron. The Chroniclers are on it, and they will find the answer. Novice, tell Commander Aaron to join us. We need to plan the defense of the land. You, Prophet, will come to me as soon as you have recovered. Now, let us get to work. Please, Tilo. Jorik is right. A war with Nerim? This is madness. I know that it is going to be tough, but we have no choice. The beacon is all that we have. Yes, the beacon. The beacon. The beacon. We don't even know what this thing does, let alone if it will work. If you start a war only because of that damn machine, it means putting the lives of thousands at risk. Only because of some vague idea. This is ludicrous, Teela. It's entirely irrational. The man I knew would never have acted like this. Yes, because that man is dead. I've made decisions driven by fear and selfishness before, and they were always wrong. I will not let that happen again. Seriously, Natara, stop acting as if this were about reason. You're just afraid of making sacrifices for what you believe in. You always were. Sacrifices. This is about your damn pride, Tilor. Nothing else. The sun be praised, you've made it. Constantine. He didn't deserve this. It's just not fair. Then none of us are strong enough. Yeah, Constantine wasn't exactly the most approachable fellow, but he was a damn skilled mage. I... I have to talk to you as soon as possible. It's about the seal in that letter we found on the mercenaries in Old Rationgrad. I believe I'm onto something. 
Their client is from Inderal. From Ark, to be more precise. Let's not talk here, though. Meet me in the Dancing Nomad. I'll be in the first room upstairs, right at the end of the staircase. And hurry. Yes, see you there. Let's hope he knows what he's doing. Irrelevant. This madman, Koarek. He has completely reshuffled the cards. Now we not only have to deal with the High Ones, but also with him and his fanatics. <sighs> However, there's also good news. You have probably seen it already. Physically, yes. And we also know how it works now, and how it can put an end to the cycle. It is easier than we thought. The beacon was constructed for one thing, to destroy the High Ones. Once reconstructed, infused with energy and activated, lit, as the Pyreans called it, it can banish the High Ones from this plane of existence. Immaterial, indeed. Essentially, they can be compared to the cold or to shadows. Omnipresent elements, yet we cannot touch them. Energy, if you will. However, there is a counterpart to each energy. Cold and fire, shadow and light, the High Ones and the Beacon. Yes. Imagine a torch driving away the darkness in the moment it is ignited. This is what the Beacon can do, except that the banishing will be permanent. Yes, as I said, it needs to be infused with energy before it can be lit. I take it you have noticed the three sockets on its base. They are what it draws its power from. Once they are filled, the beacon can be ignited and the High Ones will be undone, once and for all. At least, if the old writings are true. The only thing left for us to find out is what these energy sources are. But we are close. Give the Arcanists some more time and I will let you know if there's any news. In the meantime, get equipped accordingly. Some of the Neremis have landed already, and outbreaks of the Red Madness become more and more frequent as we speak. Well, it's only fair to tell you. You've always been honest to me, so I will do the same. Have you ever heard of the Night of the Thousand Fires? Between 8,192 and 8,202, there was an underground movement in Kira called the Red Half Moon. They were brought into being by a group of intellectuals and philosophers who, under all the freedom of thought Saldrin granted them, started questioning the reign of the Golden Queen and thus the Lightborn themselves. Saldrin saw himself as the god of knowledge and accordingly, he reigned his country. In Kira, no opinion is forbidden, which is why it is home to countless magic schools and universities, where people do nothing but discuss the reason for being all day long. An appealing thought if you hear it for the first time, but a cunning people isn't easy to reign. There have been more revolts and riots in Kira than bones in a graveyard, and the Red Half Moon was the worst of them. Correct.
just as my son did. But other than him, they fought like cowards. Terror, dust crystals planted in the marketplaces and assassinations, you name it. If they killed innocents, they blamed the Golden Queen. And if they killed her soldiers, they celebrated themselves as liberators. However, they never succeeded in putting her down, and neither did she in destroying them. Which is why the court turned to the Lightborn for help. A division of the Holy Order led by me, a young keeper of barely 30 winters. None to be taken seriously. You know, not everywhere is the Order as present as here on Enderal, or as it once was on Narim. In Kira, we were ridiculed. I saw the Kiranian keepers who served the Golden Queen. A bunch of decadent gluttons who had dedicated themselves to the court's banquets rather than to the will of the gods. They were pathetic. A moon after our arrival, we received an anonymous tip on where one of the half-moon spaces was supposed to be located, in a small coastal village. As we entered it, we were greeted by the township's elders, and the villagers themselves had gathered behind them. We should have seen how they stared at us, as if we were plunderers. I should have seen by then that something was wrong. Yes, but if there was one thing the Red Half Moon was good at, it was sowing lies. According to them, we were nothing but butchers who executed everyone unable to recite the revelation word for word. That's what they wanted us to think, and they did a good job at that. A veiled person here, an archer on the rooftops there. I got nervous, because villagers or not, they bested us in numbers, and they had kettled us. Then a man seemed to charge at us, and I gave the order to draw weapons. It was just the spark they needed. <laughs> no, not a fight. A massacre. The villagers had pitchforks and shepherd staffs, and we had shadow steel swords, let alone the fact that we were trained warriors. I realized that I had made a mistake a split second after it started, but it was too late by then. My men, they slaughtered them all like pigs. At the end of the day, 300 people were dead, and only 10 of them were keepers. Have you ever been in a big battle? Even if my men would have stopped, the villagers were blinded with rage and panic, no. From the moment I gave the order, it was too late. Well, what better proof of the Lightborn's cruelty is there than a division of keepers who, out of pure wickedness, slaughtered an entire village, women, children included. If the people had already distrusted us before that, that distrust had turned into hatred, and nothing could have changed that not even the Golden Queen's heralds. We set sail back to Enderal a week later. Two years after that, the Red Half Moon destroyed itself due to infighting. Ironic, isn't it? Maybe. The Lightborn and the Grandmaster back at that time showed the compassion I wouldn't grant myself. But I learned one thing, and that is that I will never again let fears about my own life influence my decisions. What happened in Kira was the consequence of my own cowardice and my unwillingness to give my life for a just cause. That will never happen again. What? Really? That's interesting. Provided this is true, that means that the emissaries aren't just people who fight the cleansing. They are people who fight for it, too. And that also means that whoever granted us our powers and our purpose isn't an enemy of the High Ones, but a neutral party. 
I beg your pardon. What? And the same goes for me? That's ridiculous. They wanted to deceive you, to sow discord. I saw the threat the cleansing posed before anyone else did. And without me, we would have never come that far. Something changed inside me since I fled from my prison. I feel it. And it is the same thing that made you a part of all this. Now, enough of this. Walk blessed. Yes? Yes? Right. 